five dollars to tell me about. Be more responsible. And today is the day I really started putting in the order for my new PC. Because <laughs> this one has been fighting with me. It looks like things are starting to smooth out now, so I'm not too worried about it. Hopefully it keeps up the good work for the stream. Um, network seems fine. Hopefully we, uh, we get the goods. Alright, that said... Ladder time. Put the 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 Alright, we're still on the ninth floor. Which is sweet. Well done. Wrong button. That's the button we're looking for. Okay. I'm a little exhausted. Bear with me. It is hot. Hot where we are right now. And that's not just me. I promise. Start big handing our way around the ladder. Some of the lag that we're gonna have to just muscle through, I think, in the meantime. I honestly, at this point, have no idea what is causing the CPU overload. Um, I'm not even passing much information through my CPU. CPU. So. Hopefully. Hopefully she stays clean. Doesn't give us too many problems. I haven't seen as many as we were having yesterday. But. Night's still young. So we have an Angie to start the day. I don't have, you know what, I, I, everything's out of order here. We don't have that. We don't have this. We don't have a thing to. There is so much going on here. Move all that over here. Look at the counter. start. That was 100% the wrong button to press. That's what we got. Alright. too many buttons there. Alright. And that's going to be the start of our day.
big handing my way across the screen. Let's go. Did I miss my command grab? Yes. Am I ashamed of myself? Yes. I put the wrong counter. I put a law I put a win when I should have put a loss. So we're one and one. That is it's currently the correct status, it's just the timing was wrong. We won that one, but we lost the first one. That is on me. That is on me. Nice and easy. Ease my big hands into his face. And we're good. Uh, yeah, did I miss my command grab? Yes. Am I ashamed of myself? Yes. Almost made none of the comeback on that. Yeah, okay, good, good move. Damn, I keep letting him float into that. Yep, that that's that's okay. He swung in with the counter a couple times and I just completely fell for it. So there's only so much you can do in that regard. There is something we can do though. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Dude, that game's almost out. I keep forgetting that that's coming out soon. Like, 24th, I think it is, right? DNF duels. Oh, he got lucky. He got lucky I held down on that one. Yeah, woman, wo g give me the woman with the giant axe. The hell did he disconnect? I get. Whoa, where did everybody go? Was it me? Is it me? Whole lobby just emptied out. What the hell is that? Punchy Lady is actually what I played in D uh, DNA, uh, D uh, DFO. When I played it for a brief amount of time. What's that? Sorry, I yawned. Oh, okay. <laughs> I heard a noise coming from over there. <laughs> I'm like I'm leaning grappler side. Don't get me wrong. Because he is a grappler. <laughs> like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He is a grappler. But I think I'm going to give everybody a good, solid, like, try now that I kind of understand the game. do anything. Oh, I missed it. Like, I get it. I do. wants me to do it. He's like asking for it. I know what I, I tried, I tried. Like, do you think you're cool?
I'm gonna catch him with it, and he's gonna rage quit. I just, I can, I, I can tell the attitude on the guy. Fuck it. Oh, cute, you can cross up. I'm just missing my block timing. guy is annoying. Does this guy think he's clever with this nonsense? Come on. Just play the goddamn game. <laughs> There's two types of Amelia players. Players who play the game and then players who wait for the cross up and think they're clever. Which is why I was able to catch them in the air like that. About to get knocked down to eight by a Faust. <sighs> Should have just tried. I, I tried a couple times to air grab her. It didn't catch. Oh, I thought it was out of the range of that. It's a 
lot of space that that fucking takes up. Just gotta relax. I should have bursted, but that would have been felt like a waste. I need this round. Why is he doing so much fucking damage to me? I hate knowing the future. At least knowing the future about the wrong things. Oh, I'll never understand why I had such a hard time with Fast with Potemkin. Wrong button. Good news. For Saturday. I should probably dress like this for, for when I play, right? Stop it. <laughs> you don't get the thirst over me. You're going out.
they get the thirst over me. Because they love me. <laughs> they do. Oh, okay. Today is annoying character day. That's, a, that's what I just have to live with, right? <laughs> it's their job, Amber. Get out of here. <laughs> is it rude, Melia Day, today, too? This is like when Amber and I first date started dating Left on Red. It's just it. Being left on red by Melia's now. I got questions. Every time Amber sends me something on Facebook, it's just like, what, what am I about to watch here? Especially the fitness stuff. Last fitness thing she sent me, it was a cute dog, and it was being carried by its owner. And Amber, Amber presents it as, I sent you a progressive overload workout. It's like, it's a floofy dog. It's adorable, but come on now. Context. <laughs> you don't get context. I don't provide context. Can you provide Melia's that have manners? No. Why not? The internet. Is GNF Duels out yet? Yeah, it's it's a dog and like they, they time lapse, like they took video of it when it was a puppy, and it's like one of those big floofy like chow like dogs that gets bigger and bigger and bigger, has the big smile. Has a doge like smile. Um and like the dog loved being carried, so the owner would carry it constantly. And, like, you saw the owner carrying this big-ass dog eventually over time in the middle of the street. It's like, first of all, that's not proper dog ownership. <laughs> you walk that motherfucker. Oh, it's this whole thing. Okay. I wonder if I can do that. I wonder if that's real. Like, nine times out of ten, those seem fake. Right? Like, I want to try it, but I know I'll probably fail. But I still want to try No, but the, the premise is that guys can't do it. Is that what it is? Yeah. Because I figured it was just based on course. Does 4-H have no manners today? You better be in training mode and just be missing the start button. Like, is this why the 8th floor is crowded? Nobody's actually playing the fucking game? Come on, girl. I need you to get through a couple more streams, okay? I need like a couple months out of you, you hunk of shit. <laughs> I didn't fall over, but I can do it. Hands, hands, elbow, elbows. Yeah, hand, hand, elbow, elbow, behind the back, and then behind the back. I can't. I, it's not like super smooth. I don't fall on my face doing it though. I just kind of need to rebalance the core muscle. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll try it after this. Because I got a big meaty man slapping meat fight to go here. <laughs> I gotta go to bed because I have to be up extra early to be in charge tomorrow. Okay. Good night, babe. Good luck being in charge. Uh oh. Oh, the butt drop.
much as there's two big meaty dudes attacking one another, th this feels like a chess match sometimes. But it is sort of a counter attack uh, back and forth. You have to catch the counters. And there's, like, even though we have two supers, only one works. Oh, he got me on that one. Rick Flair slaps. Oh, we got a win out of that. I should be counting that shit. Thank you. I was not paying attention. No! He caught me. He caught me. Caught me with two pot busters, one of which while I was changing the scene. not like blocking my shield. Like, he likes trying to slap it. I don't know what it is. Okay, so he does know to block it. So. Maybe he's just trying some new shit that's not catching on. Oh, he... I should have just gone for a normal throw on that. No! Yeah, I tried to go for my throw on that one, though. I don't know. I was too close in blocking. Yeah. 
What he doesn't seem to understand is my chops. Yeah. Woo! Ric Flair chops. Also, what video was it that we were looking at Brock Lesnar stuff? Because we got content claimed on our uh, our uh, our YouTube channel. <laughs> like it, it wasn't a, it, was, it wasn't like a copyright strike or anything. Like that was a content claim. WWE can have our zero dollars and zero cents all they want. Um, but I don't, what did we look at with Brock Lesnar? I don't remember. Anyway, we'll think about it. I got to pop to the washroom. I'll be right back. I think it's the risk uh, you run being me and bringing up WWE on a regular basis and then having like an hour of your stream per week that you react during. But yeah, WWE is real quick with the content claims though. If you, if you put any of their stuff on there. I'm wondering if Brock Lesnar just showed up in one of the many videos we're watching. Hey, Skeleton Daddy. Because, like, there was some kind of Brock Lesnar.wmv or something was what showed up in there. I was like, really? What did I do there? What's going on here? So. I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little exhausted because of the heat and exercise earlier today and whatnot. And I feel like I'm pre-exhausted for tomorrow. Because do you know tomorrow is the day we start the new extreme version of Get Good or Get Fit? I am i can't believe I decided I was going to do this. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow is Get Good or Get Fit. We're going to be starting Dark Souls. We're going to be riding an exercise bike while we play. And still doing our Get Good or Get Fit thing. I'm going to I'm going to be so exhausted by the time I get like I'm going to sleep like a baby. <laughs> but the next morning you'll be like I I don't wanna I don't wanna on the plus side I'm I've been doing work for home on Fridays so Hey man, if I get feeling back in one of them that or in in the one that doesn't have feeling, that would be uh, pretty good too. You know, I don't mind No, I don't want to be on that side. I mean, that's me every morning, though. Do you want to see a mental wrestling match? Watch me wake up in the morning. I'm just like, uh, I'm gonna. No, I don't want to. There's fish scales everywhere in your sink. I'm imagining that you scaled a fish to do that. I hope you scaled a fish. I hope this involved food at some point, really. That's kind of my what my hope is.
I mean, there's other ways it could have been. Like, you cook salmon for dinner. That's cool. What did you call me there, uh, Giovanna? Ooh, nummy fish. Ooh, combo breaker highlights I can deal with. I fucks with those. There was one match I caught. It was a player. I can't remember his name. Uh, he was playing Giovanna. As like I think he was trying to play it as a hard counter to another character he was having a hard time with. And it turns out he's a Potemkin main. I think I was watching it on uh, Romola's stream at the time. And then the other guy switched to uh, Gold Lewis and I was like, ooh, I'm here for this content. Uh, okay, fine. Ah, I low blocked. That was stupid of me. Please don't kill me. He killed me. Alright. Too early. Stupid rollback. Boo me out of my station? What a rude bastard. I didn't catch it. Did he did he exit out or did they uh move up a floor? Would be nice if they moved up a floor, I wouldn't feel so bad. Ooh, gross. Yeah, no, that's not good. Oh god, I forgot the 8th and 7th floor was full of this bitch. Alright, reptile. He went up? Okay. That makes me feel a little better. P4... Oh! oh. Ultra suplex mode? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, this looks awesome. I can't wait to play that game. You know what? Instinctively, I should have just hit a Roman cancel on that.
that was not a I should have just uppercut that. What's the matter with me? Mega Fisto. Big hands, baby. Big, meaty hands. Excuse me. Were the question marks in relation to that shield nonsense? Because I agree. <laughs> they jumped over the... Oh, the butt slam. That was supposed to be a throw. I got a little wild with the stick. I'll take the butt slam. <laughs> Sometimes the stick goes up a little. It's, it's wacky like that. You get in a little panic state. And sometimes you even jump when you're trying to do your uh, your supers or shit like that. I don't know, man. It was supposed to be a throw or a dust or a sweep. I don't know. One of the three. It was not supposed to be a butt slam. But I'll take the butt slam. Reptile again. Ugh. Reptile, the theme that was the best one in the Mortal Kombat, the first Mortal Kombat movie. Yeah, that's true. I'm just, I'm trying to love my R1 just a little more lately. Beyond throws. You know what I mean? Throws are great. But the sweep is good. You know? The butt slam is actually pretty gnarly. Okay.
No! Fuck, I can't believe I wasted it on that. Yeah. Part of that feels like he gave up in the middle of it. <laughs> I might be wrong. But he's like, and I hit a button. <laughs> I've had those moments where he's like, ah. I don't know if he had the meter for a Roman. Almost, almost. I pressed the wrong button. I think he forgets how high that uppercut goes. It wasn't, but it just ended up that way.
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, it did, it did feel a little rude. He's like, I'm just going to take a nap right now. I was like, oh, by the way, I have something for you. Uh, it is a big energy shield. I hope this fucks your life up. Okay, here. Hey, Gold Lewis, come over here. Let's go big meaty man over here. Come on, come on, come on. Ian, did she just... Bruh. Is this motherfucker counterpicking out here? Sorry, Reptile. The goldsmith bailed out and then switched to an Eno. I thought he was being clever. I don't know. It was weird. Alright, DJ Bread. Let's see if it was worth it. A seventh floor Eno. <laughs> Wake up to hell, bitch. Why did I go for a low block? You mean? <sighs> okay, you know. We've been there for that, Jason. We know this.
You only catch me on that when I'm not paying attention. Or when I'm in the middle of something and I don't have the meter. Now change the gold list, you smart ass. <laughs> Counter picky piece of shit. <laughs> Chaos begin. Again!
So this one is what it felt like to be on the other side of the ship. <laughs> I channeled so many things that I ran into as an Eno player when I was still trying to learn the Potemkin matchup. <laughs> Where I was like, oh, I remember when Potemkins used to do this to me. Smash the, uh, smash the sweep while they're doing the, um, the S, the, the, the S rise or whatever. Yeah. I was like, what did Potemkins do that pissed me off? <sighs> but it was never potbusters. It's like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna get a potbuster against an Eno, am I? They're too fucking squirrely. <laughs> it's like, come here! No! Sa! Ah! Alright. The washroom demon has me right now, so I will be right back after a quick trip to the men's room, and we'll continue.
<laughs> Nothing felt worse ever when I while I was like struggling to figure out Eno. And it's just like, oh god. The S note is just getting swept every time I turn around. And it's like I started getting afraid of doing every single Eno move, Eno move which is why I, I think I'm more comfortable with Potemkin. Because <laughs> Potemkin's block, 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 big hand! <laughs> Wrong scene. Or, you know, the fact that because he doesn't dash, you sort of have to rely on his move set to move him towards people. So he has very aggressive dash or forward momentum. Every time I look around, I look down, I see this guy with his unbuttoned shirt making me feel self-conscious. And then I turn around over here and I got a big angry god who, if I have four more subs, is what I am playing on rest day. Here, have another. That was a comeback, right? <laughs> they are not having any of that. It's like, excuse me? I had you, sir. I'm out. <laughs> I don't know what wizardry you pulled, sir, but I'm having none of your witchcraft. <laughs> He's just like, fucking, no. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm taking my dog and I'm going home. No, this person's gonna know. This person actually hit the OK button this time. It was the same username. Venomous Thwerk. Venomous Thwerk. Venomous Irk? I am irked. I hope it's not an annoying Melia. That's all I ask. Don't be an annoying Melia.
Very slow. Yeah, you're right. This is a weird Melia. Like, this is not what I have been running into as far as... Okay. Do you know why this Melia felt weird? Because they were a stepping stone. Back to where we started today. Okay, yeah, that was cold of me. I shouldn't have said that. But look, I've been enough stepping stones today that... <laughs> I'll call myself out when I, when I deserve it. Like, I'll be the first person to be like, yo, I have fucking, I'm that guy's stepping stone today. That, no, I'm not heel turning today. Truth be told, normally I wouldn't give it like that, but I'm trying to be entertaining. I'm streaming today. Okay? I'm streaming. I have to be... You have to bring a little bit... A little touch of seasoning to it. Look, let's see what... Whoops, that was my fault, wasn't it? Fuck! I'm such an ass. Goddamn fat-fingered. That one's, that one's on me. That one's on me. I'm an asshole. I'm an asshole. Anyway. I feel like if I was at a tournament, I would only dish it if I was being given it. You know, you sit next to somebody and they start talking shit already. It's like, all right, is this is this the day I have today? And then I say some clever old man shit if I win. Or some lame shit like, dude, I wish I could have heard the game over your fucking mouth. I don't know, I was always big on, I've always been kind of big on sportsmanship in that regard. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> a good example is when I used to watch MMA and watch UFC. I think it was Anderson Silva was fighting Damian Maya in uh, the UAE or something like that. And he was just fucking showboating the entire, entire match. I was just having none of it. Like, I used to... I, before that, I was like, oh, Anderson Silva's the best. I'm like, I really something, hope somebody pops him in the mouth when he does that shit. And then, you know, when he lost the title, that's exactly what happened. Whoops. Fucked up that command. Not the usual gorillas we're used to fighting as a saw. I have to put myself in front of the monitor on this one. That recovery.
None of my buttons are cut acting. Rollback frames we get because there's been a lot of like weird near misses. Is it just the one? Because I want to see if it's my brain or if it's the fucking if I'm getting rollback frame. Eh, it's only two. We got one out of it. Most importantly, the last one. Therefore, I get to keep the station. <laughs> He'll be back. Or he won't. He'll just disappear. Yeah. First two rounds, I was... Soul panicking. Like, look, he hits hard, yes, but chill. Just chill, just chill. You'll catch him. Alright. That is a sign that that's a rotten port. Yeah, exactly. So, he is somewhat aggressive, which means a backwards Mega Punch is best starting option. Yay, nay. Literally not what I've input.
it's hitting the sweep at the same time as me. I fucking. Not what I fucking told you to do. I mean, it is because I pressed the wrong button, but. No! I don't understand how he was just I don't know how to put it but everything I normally do was just not a thing like he was insta insta reacting off of a mega fist I fucking don't understand how that was happening Those Kai, that Kai was hungry. Stop attempting, he's like, I'm in.
Fucking coward. <laughs> Leads me to the happy chaos. Great. No. No, he was not. That, I think I might have potbustered him a little too early. Demoralized him. Bit of a scramble.
Yeah, it, it didn't work on this one, but... Okay. That was a touch aggro. And late. Missed a pot buster on that one. Could have had it too. No! Fucked! <laughs> 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 He did. <clears throat> he got the last one. I'll take the two to one. I'll take the two to one. <laughs> Hold on a second. We gotta move the goalposts here. Clearly, the gift subs are running down. <clears throat> the hell is a Trovo? Be right back, promise, I promise. We just have to adjust some things because the month has been reset upon us. And a batch of five gift subs has been, has kind of lapsed, I think is the phrase I'm looking for. I hate when it does it in the middle of the stream. Because for some reason this thing just doesn't want to fucking update its damn self.
There we go. Just gotta shift the goal posts, that's all. We'll keep we'll keep a browser open for for React Andy Dower. React hour and yeah, the reacting hour. So it's still the same number that we need. Just need another batch of gifties. And we can get wild. Right, we're gonna play that bad boy to the end. on to me. Where are we on? We still on nine? Okay, good. <laughs> Whatever, I had the meter. God damn you, happy chaos. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, the short butt slams, they're killing me too. Like, literally killing me. No, we're on the eighth floor. Yeah. Pro dishwasher, eh? I mean, if you get paid for it, you're professional, right? The bar is very low, though. Bad news. Him up, I guess. Fuck. That was violent. That was revenge, I think.
No! They don't get to. Not after the perfect in the first game. They gotta show me they earned it. Oh god, it sounds like a nightmare. Pro dish I even realized the subtext was I work at Cracker Bale or Earl. That sounds about cat. Create absolute chaos and be like, we're fine. No, we're fine. <laughs> I even pressed the button, dude. Yes, I did. He's AFK. <coughs> no idea. He came to the game, accepted the game. And then just wasn't there. Goes to the eighth floor. Rotten port. Yeah, if you win enough, you move up floors. Uh, highest floor is the Celestial floor, which I think is the 11th floor. There's 10 non... 10 floors before that. You have to get to a certain point to get to Celestial. Correct me if I'm wrong, Slash. Is the 11th floor Celestial, or...? So that's the case, we're on the low end of high. Eleventh is celestial. Okay, so yeah, we kind of sit at the low end of high. We bump up if we win enough matches. We get bumped down if we don't win enough. 
You can always go up to fight, but you can't fight below your ranking as well. Because that's just bullying. I mean, it's bullying when they come up to your rank and you beat down on them. I've had that situation before. But it doesn't do anything for you for to, to, to beat on somebody who's lower, lower floor. Yeah. Like, all these little stations are kind of like, hey, I'm waiting for a fight. I'm going to reset the floor and see what happens. Welcome. Yeah, exactly. And I just... I do live in Canada. High player. Are you asking because I'm connected to the US East server? You can own them, but only certain types of guns. Uh, you have to have like a training and license, kind of like a driver's license to own it, uh, in order to. Uh, uh, and then certain like there's certain classes of guns, like handguns and assault rifles, you can't really own. They yeah, they did a handgun ban. I mean, it's not a big deal. The only place you could really use handguns in Canada was at a firing range anyway. Yeah, there's like a handgun ban in Canada. Like, we don't have anything left, really. There's, there's a lot of restrictions with certain... Okay, we're up to ninth floor. See, we just got to the ninth floor now. Um, okay. How do I explain it best? So, if I want to own a gun, a gun, any, like, to be allowed to own a gun, the first thing you gotta do is get a gun license, which I can't remember what the license type is, but, uh, yeah, it was more of a reaction to that. It, it was showboating, grandstanding, like, the, the handguns have almost no use in Canada anyway. Except as a hobby thing. Um, so, yeah. So, kind of like a driver's license, you have to prove competence. And there's safety classes, etc., that come with that. Then, in order to get the gun, you got to have a gun ownership license. Um, which is a separate piece of paper. And then there is the different licensing for the types of guns you can own. In general, in Canada, you can own guns um, with the intent to hunt uh, wildlife. But you'll, in order to do that, you have to get um, a wildlife uh, license for it, right? Uh, we actually got a win on that. I didn't forget to mark it. Um, so, like, there, there's licensing and training and requirements to get it. If you get a gun outside of what is required for hunting, so, like, generally a base one-shot rifle, if you, need, if you want to get, like, semi-automatic weapons or whatever, you got to get a prohibited uh, weapons license. And then... When you have that license, you have to, to purchase said weapon, you have to have a lock or the ability to trigger guard it or remove the trigger somehow. The trigger mechanism cannot be touched when it is not in the place which is allowed to be fired, which is basically hobbyist, um, hobbyist uh, gun ranges, basically, right? This is a mass, like, Cliff Notes version. You guys have Cliff Notes, not Cole's Notes. Um... So, like, there's other nuances to it. But another big thing is, like, if you're going to take a one of these prohibited types of guns to another place or when it's going to move from your home, you have to inform the police and you have to take the specific route that you plan. So if there is construction on your traffic route, 
sucks to be you, deal with it. If you deviate from that route, you are breaking the law. It is pretty intense when you get outside of the hunting license. Even with a hunting rifle, you do have to own a trigger guard in the home. Ammo can't be kept in the gun while it is indoors. Um, you know, so we're, we don't have gun ownership for the sake of keeping the British out and stuff like that, so... We don't have concealed carry in this country. Like, you cannot be carrying your gun around unless you are army or police. That may differ from province to province, but we don't really have a concealed carry. Like, basically, your gun has to be going to what it's going to be doing, which is hunting or the rifle range. Honestly, it's... The funny thing is, the argument is about, like... Uh, give me a second. Oh, God, we're going to get into this. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm going to go to the washroom, and we'll discuss that whole thing in a second. Okay, so what's up with the Brits is that your constitution was based on fighting them, basically. It was written it was written to allow yeah, so basically the right to bear arms is worded in a very specific way for a reason. Um, it is in order to allow the formation of a militia, the right to bear arms will not be impeded. So the way it was wording was very deliberate and there's no getting around it because a militia is not the military a militia is a bunch of people in your city picking up arms to defend your city okay that that's what a militia is like we organize as a group because something is attacking us right so that that is worded very specifically in that way so that they can say okay look this is the reason we're doing it but ultimately we're doing this, right? So it's like we cannot, um, we we will not restrict the right to bear arms, uh, because this is the reason. But the reason is gone, right? But that's the problem. Is like the reason always sort of exists as well. You know, it's like okay, well, if anybody wants to form a militia, they're going to need to have guns. So their right to bear arms is their right. We can't do it. It's not. Because what get what people get confused about is that like, well, only the militia needs guns. Well, no, 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 that is not what they're saying. What they're saying is you can own a gun so that you can form a militia if you need to, right? And it, it it's one of those things that just carried so long um, that and because of the wording on it, it's really hard to get around it because nothing else in the constitution is worded in that way, right? It is not obtuse wording. It is very deliberate wording. Right. So when it was made, it's like, hey, the British are going to come uh, try to take this land back from us. Uh, and a bunch of farmers are going to need to pick up their guns and defend themselves. And that's, you know, it's basically if you watch the Patriot, that's what happened. Right. As the militia got formed by and little groups, ragtag groups of mini armies showed up. So unfortunately, 
that is kind of the wording on it. And legally, it's really hard to work around that, right? Now, there are state-by-state -state situations where some states have different rules than others, ultimately, long story short. Um, Yeah, exactly. The idea of a semi-automatic gun was, like, still foreign back then, right? But, you know... There's a lot of things that couldn't have been taken into account when that happens. Now, ultimately, it's weird that it gets... Because if you think of the Constitution, anything that the government does... I fucked up again. Anything the government does, if they adjust a rule, even for themselves... The way that your, you know, the number of people represented by X thing, that is, um, that is a constitutional amendment, right? Or a change to the constitution. So, like, technically it could be changed, but it's... You guys are in a state of too far gone. Yeah, it's basically a patch, but... It's...
guns I have are a rifle, two shotguns, and a handgun, and an airsoft pistol. And all those are for hunting. Except the air airsoft, I assume, which I use for practice aiming without wasting ammo. Most of the guns in the house are old war guns, which, yes, there's a couple full of automatic and such, but they don't get used. They're war guns and collect to be collected, not get used. And then the hunting guns, which are mostly shotguns and pistols. Those are locked away in either gun cabinet. Or Okay, so yeah, that's ultimately, all of that stuff is, yeah, you're very smart and very well trained, and they're, the guns are treated very well in your household. And I think what people want in general, as far as legal precedence and legal desire, is that that is the norm as opposed to, you know... Like, that, that's what people want in as far as gun control. Nobody's Nobody wants to take them away, but... Ownership has to be to a certain degree of, like, responsibility. But it's... It's really hard to justify with the way that their constitution is written. Risk of being one owner being responsible in the next headline of the news, which is what happens nine times out of ten. Next, my dad's hate to be like this because his cigarette is too So what the fuck, bro? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a political nightmare. To try to figure out how proper gun control can be like kind of implemented across the entirety of the United States, and there's lobby groups there that who, who it's like their active job to to do like to, to make sure that that never changes, which I think is the thing that really like the NRA is just not a thing here, right? So. And, but in any government, like, there's a lobbyist. There's a bunch of lobbyists. Basically, people with business interests at heart who attempt to influence government with kickbacks. We have the same thing here. They, they don't have quite the level of power that...
assume the mindset that if you ain't taking my guns, simply because of the fact that I was born and raised in the country. Yeah. Yes, that testament did teleport into the wall. Okay, got chomped. Alright, so the, the thing that's worth noting is that what would happen if there was some kind of... They're not going to take them away. Like, that's that, that's just a mindset that's got to go away. But what would be required is certain amounts of registration and licensing to track them. Because that's what happens, right? Nobody Again, nobody's trying to... We own guns in this country. The difference is there's not it's not a right. You know what I mean? I gotta stop trying to talk about this while I'm playing. Sorry. Nobody trusts any government. It's Oh, perfect timing. Ultimately, I think bar part of the problem I don't want to get into this too deeply because I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm a Canadian. We we are doing fine. I have no problem with the way our rules work. I just got to say that right off the bat. And they work, right? When you consider how many mass shootings happen in our country versus, you know, our neighbors to the south, right? It's It's hard to explain very specifically what it is part of it could be the fact that 
you know, there is a very big culture built around them, but that culture exists here too, right? So, it's probably not that, right? Part of it could be that whole constitutional right, right? But then, you know, certain things can considered, so. It's, don't worry about ask, don't worry about the question. It's just, what, what you have to understand is, it's, I'm 40 years old, I have traveled to play Magic the Gathering, traveled to play Hero Clicks, I have been south of the border, I have made friends south of the border, and I very, very, very quickly recognize that nothing I say is going to convince anybody when there is a right given that, you know, you can limit that right, you know? Even though you can't. So, I, it's a conversation I've had so many times, I just fucking hate it now, right? And it's just because the, the, I, I don't have a dog in the fight, and it's really hard to have a dog in said fight. So, um, don't take it as me being dismissive, but it's also why I think we have it in the rules that, like, we try to avoid politics as far as the conversation is concerned, because everybody has their own, and, um... What, how, how would I, I uh, give me a second. No, don't worry about it. It's just, one thing worth noting is that, like, the problem is that it's a political issue. That's the problem. The problem is that it's a political issue. Right? And part of that problem comes from the fact that there is an inherent need to want to protect what you have. Right? You really want to protect uh, what you own, what you have, and your family. And some people feel like they need to be armed to do that, which I get. Right? I'm a person in... Uh... No, you know what? I let it slide often enough. We don't have... We don't have to be super strict about it, so. I think that I said it as a, I gotta double check just to be sure. Let's just see. Cause I'm pretty sure. Uh, I can't, I don't, it's not there. Okay. I'll have to check later. Either way, I have an election that I have to vote for tomorrow, so this stuff doesn't come up, though. Um, and yeah, like I said, part of the problem is that's a political issue, and really, it's a safety issue. And uh, it's a safety that can't be insured in general. So, anyway, let's have fun, shall we? Let me double. Ooh, I gotta double check because I turned some things off recently. I gotta go here. Nope, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, okay. Turn that off. We go into this. Doom. So we're looking at the Combo Breaker highlights. Guilty Gear Strive, King of Fighters 15, Tekken 7, and more. Channel points request things that I ignore. Channel point things I've been ignoring? What have I been ignoring? Mike's Farm Mac and Cheese. No, I have not heard of that. Is that like a box brand of Mac and Cheese? Oh, there's channel points, yeah. We call them hoots. You spend them all the time to thank for the memories. Oh, review, request, review things. Do we have a reviewer? What? What have I done? I'm a terrible Twitch streamer, apparently. Let's check my dashboard.
What's at 99 plus? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, there's no racism, no politics, is there? <laughs> yeah, Johnny Depp case is over. It was really weird that he won the defamation case. I was, I don't, honestly, I don't think he was expecting to win it. Okay, sorry, when you say review request things, what are you referring to? Because I can't seem to find what you're talking about. Oh, okay. People have requested those. Okay, fair enough. That's weird. Oh, there's drops out there that I have should be really looking at, because sometimes I do play games that... Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> it's like, I don't play any of this shit. Never mind. Anyway. I... Wow. I have to learn about this stuff. Holy crap. I did I don't see all of this. <laughs> um Okay, I really got to stop. I'm I'm just I'm lost. I'm stun locked. Here we go. Thanks. Holy shit. Okay. I'm just... I did not realize. So I just marked them all as completed. <laughs> that should, uh... That should fix that. Oh, honestly? Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. You know what? We'll let them accumulate from now. Mark the date. <laughs> Alright, let's watch the highlights, shall we? Oh, I'm wondering, is the Puzzle Fighter from the Mystery Tournament? I didn't catch all of the Mystery Tournament. I got pretty far into it and then life got in the way. Oh, but we could get some kind of change the action Oh, here. Okay, alright. Alright. Yeah, look at this. Big damage. Oh, and we're getting some trouble off the other side. Yeah. Oh, man. Gotta get those combos. Alright, you have a good night. Oh, no. There's a red crash. Oh, here comes. Here comes the 
<laughs> they were so young. The thing is, I did them all. Like, I'm pretty good about doing all of those all at once. There's the recap, and you have to. The reset to the throw! Oh my goodness, this is an opportunity for Ovis here to great jump back, but the heavy axe into Ultra Apex does it! Do or die reverse sweep qualifies! We got there. Apex moves on, and look at the emotion here, the work done. That is a well deserved victory if I ever did see one. Look at how much that, it means. Is he gonna be okay? Come on! Combo breaker! That's did 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 he just get battle toted? <laughs> or he was doing the battle toting? What it's all about? Yes, absolutely. And Ovis also over there as well. It's like, dude, we gotta get you off the stage. Come on, great come on. It both fought so. It is. I really want to figure this game out. It's, it was a lot of fun when we played it. I want a man to get all the parries for once and get the kill. Like, <laughs> the second time this week. Not yet. Blocks. Oh, parries. Yes. 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 Holy. Holy cow, Jack Bye. You got this sort of whip. Wait for the oh, winner. Shot, 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 shot. Oh, this could be that. Go Dino. Oh, no. It's go Dino! This one go gonna put him in the lead. Big Ukes! Oh, oh, Get Dino! Say Jam! Say Jam, we got a video for you! Jesus! Yeah, might have Ease attack. I think a lot of the Isla players are pretty happy too because Whoa. it seems like they got started. Ooh, nice. The comeback's the real here. Does he have this? Oh, he oh, has those. Does he got this? Yo, we got combos? It's a new room. We're on the final room. I, I'm, I'm gonna say this right now. One thing I really like about King of Fighters right now is the most recent patch took away, like, the must-have team. Um, which was, I think it was Terry, Vanessa, and uh, there's like a rotation of Elizabeth and the big dude. I can't remember his name. But there's always, always a Vanessa, always a Terry, at minimum, on the teams. Um... And the, the most recent patch seemed to completely fix that, and characters are way more represented in King of Fighters 15 now, which big ups to them. But this is oh! Us in case on top of the ship. Building that meter. Here we go, Shim Paulo right now. Here we go, more hits. Bakunets can. EX Bakunets. Oh boy, yes. That did a grip of damage. That is that is that is a combo. What oh, is this is the auction tournament. Okay. Uh, you think like, oh, oh, this is God. where they're bidding on characters. That's why there's going to be even more representation there. Okay. Oh, oh that pressure. Play footsies. Nice string from Randall. He's controlling this corner. Randall says, I didn't catch it. That was from Stop the uh, auction tournament the previous round. Stop Stop Where are you going? What are you doing? The crack. He totally cracked there. I told got you. Got him. I told you. Oh I've seen God. some things. Well, I have seen some things. That would definitely be something that would take the wind out of the sails of any player. Yeah, because, I mean, that's literally getting every single time. Of I love King so much. Tell me there's more of those. Please tell me there's more of those. A good button for both of them. Yeah. And this loser final, there wasn't, loser okay. Has to go home. <laughs> but just smashing each other against the loyal yeah, is straight up Dragon Ball Z shit. Who goes on to see Paco in the big dance? Oh, oh no, big he wanted, he wanted Fireball. Oh, wow. nice health he was baiting a DP so hard there, but Damn, again, he great discipline from hard. the I like the thought process there. That was very tense. A lot of people just would think like, get him off me. Nice. Oh, 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 no activation! Oh, 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 no, 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 no. This is gonna hurt, this is gonna hurt, this is gonna hurt! Level two! Stop! Stop! Damn. Oh, no, he's in so much Oh, Wreck him. Oh, 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 Oh my god! You see the weight, the weight, hot kick, you gotta wait for it to be perfectly seasoned and then you do it. 
Slides it for pressure. Shadow, huge lead to start it off the second round. Good uh, light lead here for Shadow. The slide is good, Phil. Full cross mix up. Have been working out for Gen. Shadow chilling, though. Ooh, back three. Jack Hill with rage. Jack Hill with rage right here. Too much. Room. Oh boy, double rage. This is this is the big difference oh boy, it's close. in Pro it's Tekken and my guard. fucking slapping Whoa, buttons around. No, he no, he There's can't. so much oh footsies in uh, in Tekken, man. Wow, the pixel. And not just footsies, but like oh, what? tap oh, counter hit, hit oh, counter oh, hit. Oh, double KO. Oh. oh. Stuff. We saw a lot of people get hit by the follow. Yeah, I don't blame him. Take a stop. Ooh, Yo, do those assholes! Do it again! Do it again! Do it again! Do it again! That's a good step in. This all the five miles of death. Uh -huh. A E I O U A E I O U The five miles of death! Stop! Stop! <laughs> What? Stop shooting me! Sometimes Y and then the start over on the alphabet. That was every single shot. <laughs> but this is the corner carry for sure. Razzo's in trouble. Is this gonna be a wall splat? Wow! Did it kill though? Uh -oh. Rosie, assessing uh -oh. that. Rosie, Rosie with the boom. Defense here. Oh! oh, oh, oh. oh my God, you no hate to see it. The resources. This is a go back to the start. Back to the start. The RC. Oh my God! Oh, so close to the chip. God damn! That's insane. The double KO on the last hit on the stun match point. That's absolutely nuts. Our temp is one, right? Well played on it's that one. Enough to kill Tempest, your combo breaker 2022 Guilty Gear Strive champion. Oh my god, the emotions must be rushing everywhere in his body, man. Give it up for the champion, y'all. Tempest, 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 Tempest. I was reading somewhere, I can't remember where I saw it, but the representation character wise, yeah. Thank God it wasn't Happy Chaos. The thing is, every time every time the discussion gets to Happy Chaos, it's like, oh my God, Happy Chaos is so OP. We got to nerf Happy Chaos. Happy Chaos doesn't win. Either Hitachi wins or Happy Chaos like makes it but doesn't win. It's like, he's not winning. <laughs> he's just a feels bad. You know what I mean? one of those situations was like yeah exactly well there was a, there was a massive representation in the top 64 like if you took the top 64 uh players there was three unrepresented characters it was jacko testament and i can't remember who else um gold lewis i think i want to say it was gold lewis which is pretty insane when you think about it, right? Yeah. There was, there, there was nobody in, in the top 64, there was not a testament. So Jacko Testament, Gold Lewis didn't make the, uh, the top 64. I'm not saying there wasn't players of them, and we're talking about the top 64 of the tournament that had a, more than a thousand entries. So... God knows what happened in matchups and pools and ridiculousness. Like, pools can get wacky, right? Sometimes somebody who should have gotten out of pools doesn't get out of pools, right? So. Uh, I am currently just trying to see if we got any fun stuff out there. to refresh again because that usually helps 
Refresh my front page, it always comes up with good stuff, guys. Damn, we've had a lot of early nights this week. Am I going to have to call it early? No, I'm not going to call it early. Maybe I'm just feeling the exhaustion of talking about gun laws. <laughs> uh, subs. Yeah, I, once again, I uh, I have failed you as uh, as a content. No, wait, drunken. You had a video about drunken fighting last week, right? Where it's like representation of drunken fighting in in fighting games. So let's take a look at that one, right? I think I might have clicked on it, so it might be in my history. Here we go. Sugar Punch Designs. That's what they're called. Okay. These guys are fun. These guys are always fun for, for some good content. And good fighting game discussion, as we like to keep it. We like to keep it relevant to the conversation. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that, which you should do if you're not already done. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, it's probably what you look like in a drunken brawl. Like, I, I think back like at how many times I've gotten into like drunken goofing around and drunken brawls and stuff like that, and that's probably what I look like. Uh. The world of Chinese Kung Fu is a vast landscape where the most esoteric of martial arts flourishes. But no style of Kung Fu has obtained a near mythical level of infamy like Drunken Fist. Due in no small part to Jackie Chan's famous Kung Fu cinema classic, Drunken... I, Drunken Fighter is one of those movies I regret not seeing as a teenager. Because it was, it, like, we always, me and the guys would always have that, like, yeah, let's, let's watch this Kung Fu movie or this Kung Fu movie. This is badass. That kind of shit. And, uh, yeah. Anyway. Drunken Fist has been immortalized as a Drunken staple Fist of Kung Fu pop I wish culture. It Naturally, this means that it's inevitably made its way into fighting games in one form or another. So take a seat and knock back a few while we take a look at Drunken Boxing in today's Style Select. Drunken Boxing specifically. I want to see if anybody collected VODs of the... I'm going to... While this is running... And while well, I'm kind of paying attention, I'm going to see if I can find any of the Combo Break or Mystery Tournament uh, highlights. Appropriately for a martial art inspired by drunkenness, the origins and history of Drunken Fist, also known as Jui Chuan, have been largely forgotten and lost history, much like your car keys on the morning after a raging bender. It's said to have been Let me also get that out of the way. I gotta turn this down here. The Shaolin traditions tell the story of a martial artist named Liu Qizong, who took refuge with Shaolin monks to repent for the better. Okay, good. Qizong was also a profound alcoholic, and when the monks forbade him from drinking, he instead got super slammed and defeated 30 monks in a drunken rage. Other stories tell of a drunken Lu Han, the Shaolin name for the Buddhist Arhat, a saint who has achieved enlightenment and nirvana. The Taoist tradition takes inspiration from the drunken eight immortals of Chinese mythology, which inspired eight different forms of Zui Chuan based on each character. One of the bigger misconceptions about Zui Chuan is that it's often mistaken as being a self-contained style, but that's not actually true. Zui Chuan only encompasses a subset of techniques that are a part of a larger style. Southern Hung Ga has Jui Chuan, Choi Li Foot has Jui Chuan, Park Fu Moon has Jui Chuan, Wu Shu has Jui Chuan, Bai Yin Chuan, Yin Jiao Pai, Tang Yang Chuan, Fu Shenzong System. Oh, wow, there's a lot of Jui Chuan out there. I didn't even know that. I'm just finding out now. 
One of the most famous practitioners of drunken boxing in history is the folk hero So Chan, better known as Beggar So, one of the Ten Tigers of Canton who infamously created the Golden Bowl and Iron Chopsticks technique, a martial art that literally uses a bowl and chopsticks as weapons. Beggar so I'm sorry, what? I'm just, I'm, I, all I'm saying is, I wish I would have known this when I was working in the restaurants, okay? That's all. So was famously depicted by the late Yuan Shu Chen. Also, Kung Fu, are you okay? 1978's Drunken Master. Which lets me segue neatly into the part you're all probably watching this video for. Let's talk about Jackie Chan. As many of you no doubt know, Jackie Chan is unarguably one of the most influential martial arts stars in cinema history. His films employ a unique blend of masterful choreography and physical slapstick to form a brand of action comedy that is unique to him and him alone. In Drunken Master, Jackie plays a young Wong Fei Hung, Normally a famous hero of Chinese folklore, but this time portrayed as a mischievous screwball who can't catch a break. Upon meeting with Beggar So and surviving his grueling training, Fei Hung reemerges as a disciple of Zui Chuan, and by embracing the drink and letting himself loose, he overcomes and defeats a powerful and dangerous foe. Jackie's Zui Chuan is about toying with his foes, getting them so tilted that they commit to making mistakes over and over again, turning <laughs> even a master martial artist into a bumbling fool. The real practice of Zui Chuan is actually more internal than external. The common myth is that a Kung Fu master just slams back a few pints and suddenly emerges a Zui Chuan master, but this is obviously a product of fiction. A Zui Chuan Give me a second, I'm gonna let that buffer. I'm doing too much all on the computer right now. I really shouldn't be doing that. Okay, I couldn't find what I was looking for anyway. practitioner needs proper breathing and focus to control their qi gong and release bro youtube what are you doing right now it's buffering the fuck release the tension in their limbs granting the flexibility needed to assume Jui Chuan's bizarre postures, something you actually can't do while drunk. The core concept of Jui Chuan is deception. You take on weird, unbalanced postures to feign vulnerability in order to trick your opponent into making a mistake, then strike back from the most unexpected of angles. At least, that's the theory, but does Jui Chuan actually hold up in a real fight? I can't really find that many anecdotes of fighters trying Zui Chuan in real combat, and there are few clips of fighters trying Zui Chuan in sport fights. A surprising amount of them actually take a win using either a surprise attack, or by being so flexible that they're immune to submission holds. But one thing that is common in these fights is that their opponents simply weren't ready for them. And when a fight really boils down to a difference between winning and losing, sometimes you only have to surprise your opponent once. Hey guys. This is future ABI from the editing desk with a little bit of a disclaimer. I am fully aware that the Chinese Communist Party uses Kung Fu as part of its propaganda to push some sort of agenda about cultural integrity and nationalism. As a result, the process of making these videos makes it difficult to find genuine demonstrations of Chinese martial arts that aren't staged by the CCP to promote their agenda. Even the clips I just used might have been staged in such a way to let the Zui Chuan fighter win. If it sounds like I'm pontificating about Zui Chan or any other Chinese martial art on this show, I just want to make it clear that I do so because I love the history and culture of Kung Fu, and that I do not approve of what the CCP is using it to represent. 
I repeat, this video and others like it are not made to advocate for the Chinese Communist Party. I am just a nerd who likes fighting games and kung fu. <laughs> God damn, imagine having to play that in your fucking video. Alright, so a couple things that I noticed in what we were watching. Um, one, a couple of instances were just flat out fucking trolling. And that is a thing that does happen in combat sports, especially when you get to a level above others. Um, and as I was complaining earlier about Anderson Silva, the same kind of thing can happen. And he was notorious for dropping his hands, putting his face forward, waiting for somebody to hit him, and just kind of doing a duck and weave situation where it's like he's doing everything in a combat situation that you've been taught. So, you're taught in Muay Thai, you're taught in boxing, keep your hands up, otherwise your face is a massive target. But when you get to a skill and ability up so far above certain other fighters, that, oh, I'm just gonna BAM for you guys. <laughs> um, what'll happen is, yeah, exactly, the Muhammad Ali, the, the, the rope-a-dope, right? You just kind of sit there like, uh-huh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you just not hitting me even though you should be hitting me because my hands aren't up? Are you a little tired now? Wham, wham, wham. Right? All of a sudden, my hands are finally back up and hitting you. Right? Now, the problem with that, of course, is Chris Weidman versus Anderson Silva Part 1. Anderson Silva's like, ha, 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 try and hit me. Oh, oh my God, he hit me. Oh, oh he hit me again. <laughs> and then it was nap time. And so it doesn't always work. You, and sometimes you get a little bit too familiar with yourself being that far above or too comfortable. That's what I'm looking for, too comfortable doing that kind of shit, and then you just get caught. of being a drunken master in a video game, you typically think about wanting to be elusive and tricky. You want enemies tripping over themselves just trying to hit you. And you wouldn't be wrong to think so. That's how most game designers interpret Jui Chuan. The legacy of Jui Chuan is so iconic and easy to translate into gameplay that even Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition has a drunken master archetype for the monk class, complete with a set of class abilities that lets it tumble past enemies and misdirect them. Did third edition not have that? Their attacks. There are about seven Jui Chuan characters I can find in fighting games, but since I don't really have any experience with Martial Masters or the Double Dragon fighting game, I couldn't really tell you much about those two. In order of release, there's Qin Gensai, who debuted in King of Fighters 94, Shun Di in Virtual Not until Prestige, eh? Lei and it's 3.5, not 3. Brad Interesting. Long in Dead or Alive 3, and Bo Rai Cho in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. All of these characters manage to capture the essence of Jui Chuan through deception, misdirection, and baiting opponents with the illusion of vulnerability. My personal favorites of this group are Brad Wong and Lei Wu Long. Brad's debut in DOA 3 was a real curveball in terms of character design and gameplay feel. DOA's combat is defined by this lightning-fast tempo where characters can throw out a flurry of attacks with minimal effort which is why Brad really stands out with his slower, offbeat rhythm that's harder to predict. Even his basic movement is inconsistent and weird. I swear to God, if you are used to shit coming at you fast, Elden Ring and Dark Souls 3 are proof that the second you slow that shit down, your brain melts. It's like, ah. <laughs> What do I do now? If you're used to, like... So, I think it was, um... Margit. Margit? There's a first situation where it's like, Oh, he's up in the air! Dodge! Why has he not come down yet? <laughs> so, it's so fucking weird. But it's like, why, why? I should be getting hit right now. You need to stop this. It's actually one of the issues I ran into in Surge 2 with the directional blocking. Because you're also trying to read their attack animation when you are doing the directional block. But if they don't move right away you're sitting there like uh, uh oh is it now is it now is it now <laughs> yeah exactly 
And if they take away a half a beat, you're going to be a beat, half a beat off. And it's like, fuck. <laughs> also never consistently stays on his feet. He slips seamlessly from posture to posture. And there's not a single angle that Brad can't attack you from. Facing backwards, on the floor, on the floor backwards, upside down, upside down backwards. Brad also happens to be the most visually distinctive Zuichuan character in this listing. Zuichuan characters tend to lean towards one of two visual archetypes. They're either Beggar So or they're Jackie Chan. Brad actually hits somewhere in between and stands out more because of it. Lei Wulong technically- Dude, he looks like the guy who just, like, put down his beer and took off his fedora to fight. He uses a more accurate style of Zuichuan since his Zuichuan moves are- he, he, But he was here for the ACDC cover band. A fraction of a mixed kung fu cocktail. Lei is more or less a tribute to Jackie Chan's entire filmography, which is why he also has animal style kung fu and also why he's a cop. Where Brad is drunk all the time, Lei can choose between Zuichuan and one of his many other forms, making him a veritable kung fu Swiss army knife. Other Zuichuan characters have ways of delivering the drunken master fantasy. Shun Di gets more dangerous the more drinks are in him as he unlocks more powerful moves. Chin is quite literally an homage to Yuan Shou Chen's depiction of Beggar So in Drunken Master. And we're not talking about Bright Show. In the right hands, <laughs> Hold on a second, I want to read what was there. Drunken Master. And we're not talking about. <clears throat> Let's be real, at the time of his. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Let's be real. At the time of his conception, Bo Wright Show was nothing more than a lowbrow barf and fart joke. There's nothing irreverent about his depiction of uh, of Zulquan in Deadly Alliance, and he's just there to be a fat drunkard who barfs and farts because fat characters in video games in the 2000s weren't allowed to have dignity. I'm aware that he was given a more faithful drunken master version in MK10. Uh, he even got the same lying on the floor stance as all the other Zulquan characters have. And you'll have to forgive me for going off about MK animation again, but this is an Easter egg anyway. In a rare case for NRS animation, Bo Wright chose floor stance demonstrates a bizarre instance in which animation canceling is actually working against uh, their favor. Uh, most characters who use this stance can transition into it organically by falling over from another move, but since Bo Wright Cho can't cancel into it, it looks like he halts anything he's doing to just lie down for a quarter, a fourth of a second before standing up to continue his attack. I've seen combos with this move, and it looks like he's just planking mid combo. It's imperceptible and not in the fun of Zun Quan way. Even though no matter how noble they attempt to make Bo Ray, uh, Ray Cho, there's nothing dignified about farting and barfing as a fighting style. He will never rise against being a third grader's fart joke. It should come as no surprise that I do not like Bo Ray Cho. Dude, Bo Wright Show is not real. He's not going to hurt you. Up right show. In the right hands, Joey Chan is tactical genius disguised as buffoonery. In fighting games, Joey Chan gives players the tools for wild jukes and crazy baits, taking whimsy and turning it into power. More than anything, Joey Chan is just plain entertaining to watch. The visual spectacle of Joey Chan translates so well in both gameplay and game feel. That any time I play a Zui Chuan character, it feels like watching Drunken Master all over again. I've seen Capoeira once, and I think it was this character specifically in Tekken 4. If he's still in Tekken, then... Oh, I guess Elena would be Capoeira. I just thought she was a rubbery bitch. I kind of actually want to watch the Capoeira one if it's easily... Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Oh, it's too recent! It's too recent! No! It's not out yet! No! Okay, hold on a second. DNF Duels comes out June 24th, right?
Why is this still... June 28th. Oh, thank God. Uh, June 28th. What a day of the week is that? That's a Tuesday. Uh, fuck. Amazon's gonna bring it here. <gasps> June 28th. Because the 24th is Capcom Fighting Collection. Which I have pre-ordered. Which I am going to play. We're going to go online. And we are going to play... Darkstalkers. After I learn how to play Darkstalkers. <laughs> Alright. Hold on. Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that. Yeah, one thing I've always had... Darkstalkers, I've always had a hard time sort of knowing what the fuck to do. <laughs> like, I always, I've always pictured it as a Street Fighter-esque game, but it's probably closer to, uh, like, early Marvel vs. Capcom. Like, Marvel vs. Capcom 1, that sort of situation. Um, okay, here we go. Here's a little bit of an older... A um, video from Sugar Punch. Let's see what they got so with. Eagle Eye viewers might have noticed that I've been running something of a survey in the community posts. I asked for discussion about four particular characters. In so, this is going to be one of those like, is it as bad as they thought, think sort of situations, so. Grid from various Capcom works. Lucky Chloe from Tekken 7, and Marie Rose and Honoka from Dead or Alive. No poll, no question, just discuss. Most of you might have picked up that there are some subtle similarities between these characters. Woo woo e girls? But the one quality they all share is that they are all hated by their respective fan bases. Wait! I played the hated girl, the oo e girl in Tekken 7. People hate her? And I feel like I must stress that they are hated. Not disregarded, not disinterested. Hated. If Hakan shows back up in Street Fighter 6, I'm maining him. In between Zangief fights. The kind of hate that elicits a groan or a sigh if you so much as mention these characters. The kind of hate that one has to commit to their memory. To put it plainly, these characters live rent-free in the heads of many. <laughs> so today I'd like to discuss these characters based on the feedback that's been posted and see if I can make sense of the conversation around them. Probably the oddest character on this lineup is Ingrid from, uh, Capcom. Before from I'm Capcom. Ingrid, it's worth going over her history, if only to highlight how confusing her origins are. Ingrid was originally slated to be one of three original fighters in a game called Capcom Fighting All Stars. In that game, she. This game, the fact that Capcom Fighting All Stars didn't come out is a fucking crime. And two other originals, DD and Rook, are code holders. Fighters with supernatural powers who work for a mystery organization, hired by Mike Hagar to disarm a bomb in Metro City. She is associated with the code words Eternal Goddess and Isis. Fighting All Stars was then cancelled, and we never got to see how that plot would unfold. But the concept and Capcom should be under arrest for cancelling it. Of an all Capcom crossover would later be regurgitated into Capcom Fighting Evolution. A low-budget slapdash acid dump that failed spectacularly. This is why. This is why that crime should... This is why it should be a crime. Because this is what we got. Oddly, this is where Capcom decided for Ingrid to make her debut. Complete with the only brand new 2D sprite in the whole game. In Fighting Evolution, Ingrid is some kind of sun goddess who uses her powers to banish Pyron. I think. She would later appear as a bonus character in Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max, a PSP port of the original game on PS1. In that game, wait, 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 wait. Wait. The PSP version of Street Fighter Alpha 3? <laughs> Fuck off. 
Ingrid is a time-traveling soul magician who claims to be the progenitor of Psycho Power. In her ending, she defeats M. Bison, Deadass steals the Psycho Drive, and disappears into space with it. <laughs> this would mark Ingrid's last playable appearance in a fighting game, forever banished into the Capcom bin of cameos and crossovers. Her last playable appearance would be in Project Cross Zone 2, where she resumes her role as a pan-dimensional crossover god. All this to say that there is zero consistency regarding who or what Ingrid even is. Even her latest bio in the Capcom character database doesn't tell us anything about her. Which is why it's odd that Ingrid is remembered largely as a character detested by Street Fighter fans. That's where I was going to go. It's like, how can they hate this character who's barely been around? The very mention of her name would cause one to froth at the mouth, swearing to the... This is, upon further review, the worst Street Fighter anime. High heavens that she's the worst character in the franchise. How could someone... It was great as like a young teenager or a late, uh, sorry, an older teenager, early 20s. It was like, look at all the fighting moves. Look at Dang get fucked up over there. But no, that was fucking terrible. I can't believe I liked it. a character that nobody knows anything about. The feedback on Ingrid was the most eye-opening of all the discussions I posted. While we had commenters who had either never heard of Ingrid or swore their undying hatred for her, the majority of comments acknowledge that people hated Ingrid, but no one actually remembers why. <laughs> she debuted in a <laughs> That is what we call community trauma. <laughs> it's community trauma. <laughs> Coney pointed that out in one video where it was like, there's a, there's a Mr. Game and Watch way up in the air, and everybody was under a platform, all crowded together. There's four people playing, all of them were under that platform. Because Game & Watch was way above. That's community trauma. ...a game in 2004 and only made an appearance in a bonus character in the handheld port of Alpha 3 in 2006. And that's it. If you claim that you hate Ingrid's in-game personality and animations, then you are lying because nobody played these games. I played this game. <laughs> You're lying because nobody... No King Port. All joking aside, these games are so obscure that only a small subset of people would have experienced Ingrid. That's the thing. There is here, here's here's how this happened. There's 18 people who bought this game. That is hyperbole. Bear with me. We're, we got a punchline coming here. Mm. 18 people played this game, and one guy's brother. They, they, they Wi-Fi connected or something. They, they found a way to play multiplayer on the PSP. And one guy's brother stomped on him with Ingrid. And he went online to his forum. And he was like, fucking Ingrid. Ah! And then somebody's like, dude, it's not that bad. And then he was explaining why Ingrid kept beating him. And then like seven other people were like, yeah, Ingrid's fucked. Fucking hell. And then just this is where community trauma kicked in because nobody actually had the problem except for this guy but he's loud and obnoxious it's why when like 14 people are complaining about something and somebody changes like why 14 people complained if a million people own your game and 14 are complaining about a problem do you know what do you know what people don't do is they don't talk about it when they don't have a fucking problem <laughs> Those few that did likely formed an even smaller vocal minority and proclaimed that they hated her. And since no What did I just say? No <laughs> one could talk about this character. Those few complaints are the only opinions about Ingrid to outlast the game. So if the comments are to be believed, anyone who does hate Ingrid is only hearing about her through the forgotten echoes of a shitty game from 2004. The other common complaint about Ingrid is how much she ruins the canon of Street Fighter by making a jobber out of M. Bison in her very first suit. Ruins the canon of Street Fighter. This is the problem with people who think they know shit about Street Fighter. The fucking canon? Is this why people are fucking complaining about Ryu having fucking shoes? God 
damn it. Get a grip. There is no story. The only the closest thing to a story we've ever had in Street Fighter was that straight to VHS anime fucking version of Street Fighter 2. That was pretty fucking cool. But that's it. Everything else has been hot junk. Like, M. Bison has been the most inconsistent supervillain ever. Like, it just... There is no canon. It's made up. They attach a story to make it somewhat marketable. Fuck. Here's appearance. To which I have to ask... What canon? Thank you! Street Fighter Alpha 3 doesn't exactly have rock-solid canon to its in-game endings, where every... Hell, even the story of Street Fighter fucking forgot about Street Fighter Alpha 3. One makes a jobber out of M. Bison. Karin blows up his base with a satellite laser. Stangeek destroys the Psycho Drive by pile-driving E. Honda into it. And each time, Bison gets his ass kicked every which way by a Japanese schoolgirl, some random British punk, and Dan... I really wouldn't try to defend the canonicity of Ingrid in Alpha 3 Max because she's a bonus character in a port of a port of a port. If you acknowledge Ingrid as part of Alpha 3's canon, then you also have to acknowledge time traveling Yun. Get fucked. Predictably, Tekken 7's lucky Chloe was met. I'm gonna say this right now. If you got a problem with the Uwu Cat Girl in Tekken. The game with the bear and the kangaroo? Get a grip. Don't hate on my main. The hysteria from Lucky Chloe's reveal got so heated that Tekken producer Katsuhiro Harada engaged in a bit of troll warfare on his Twitter from angry fans who demanded him, Harada. to be removed from the game. Get him. with her upon her initial reveal. Tekken 7 was circulated for arcade location tests as early as 2014 with a limited roster, adding new characters with each proper update. The 2015 version of Tekken 7 saw the first reveal of Lucky Chloe, followed by the aforementioned shit show. It's important to note that Eddie Gordo was not yet in the game and wouldn't be revealed until the full title update, Tekken 7 made a retribution for consoles. So between the years 2015 and 2017, people believed that Eddie was being replaced by Chloe. And it wouldn't even be the first time Eddie was replaced by a female counterpart, although I have no memory of anyone actually complaining about Christy. Counterpart. Gee, I wonder why we didn't complain. People need to get a fucking grip. Like, seriously. <laughs> the game with the panda, the kangaroo, and the... Okay, I'm gonna let King go, because I think King is actually just an homage to Tiger Mask, who is a legitimate Japanese pro wrestler. Serious. 
Raven, Dragunov, Lars, Steve, the Williams, even all the Mishimas at one point or another get to feature in one or more joke endings. Heihachi, the cornerstone of the Mishima family drama, had joke endings for three games in a row and features in countless more. It was only inevitable that Eddie would get his turn in the loony bin. No one escapes the loony bin. Everybody gets their goofy shit in Tekken. The story. There's like three characters that matter in the Tekken story. So chill. One thing before he gets into it that I do remember is DOA had a very prominent female player base, which I thought was really cool. Like, it's really cool that DOA had so many women in pro play and just general play. Like, I guess the best phrase, the best way I could phrase it is chicks dig DOA. Yeah. Like, there was a number of prominent female competitors in DOA. In fact, I want the game to get a fucking resurgence so that, you know, that happens again. That would be awesome. Because I want to play in the tournament with the girls. <laughs> Not in that perverted way. Chill. God. A little bit. started as either Haha Booba or Ew Booba. And I've been sort of out of touch with DOA now that it's grown into an actually legit fighting game. Booba notwithstanding. But there is one remark among commenters that I feel like I have to address them, and it's the idea that Marie Rose and Honoka have no personality. I have to ask, what counts as having a personality to a fighting game character? To a Team Ninja fighting game character. I wonder where they keep the personality in DOA. I can think of several other characters from fighting games who might regard to have no personality. Like, Abel. I've done the wiki dive and I've analyzed his in-game presentation. Abel, okay. He can talk, he's going to talk about his thing. Abel, it's not even personality. He was the most Boring character I've ever played, used, played against, seen in Street Fighter. Like, I could not believe how bored I was with Abel. Just his appearance in general. But I could not tell you a single thing about who Abel is as a person. Him and Charlie. He's I'm French. bored of them. And he has a throw, I guess. Marie Rose, on the other hand, couldn't be more upfront about her personality. It's baked into every bit of her animation, more so than any other girl in TOA. There's a purpose to it all, because her fighting style is Sistema, a martial art that utilizes joint locks and counter holds to turn an enemy's momentum against them using the minimal amount of physical exertion. Marie Rose's posture makes her look vulnerable and harmless, inviting an enemy. <laughs> that walk back is so good. Like, just that walk cycle. Doop it doop ba doop ba doo. Fucking god damn it. There was more personality in that walk cycle than like 90% of the DOA franchise. No personality.
The same is largely true for Hanukkah, whose timid and amateurish fighting posture conceals a frankly genius level of creativity and improvisation using moves that aren't even hers. The other common sentiment about Marie Rose and Hanukkah is that they've overshadowed the entire franchise. To be fair, even I can see that Marie Rose and Hanukkah have started to take over the brand. Koi Tecmo even made a Muso crossover game with all of their IPs, and the DOA representatives were Kasumi, Marie Rose, and Hanukkah. To this, I have to agree. While it's not always a bad case when a popular character is given the spotlight, the emergence of Marie Rose and Hanukkah as the new faces of DOA has cemented in a fundamental change in the DOA franchise as a whole. DOA was at its most popular between DOA 3 and 4, even getting ad spots on American television. Yeah, I agree with that being a weird choice. But it was also during this era when the game had become somewhat stagnant. There was nothing of significance that was really different from DOA. DOA also for a period of time, especially in North America, got a little too self-aware of the cheesecakiness of it. And like, there was even an ad I think it was for DOA 3 because lo and behold, the Xbox Xbox ads had no class. And because it went Xbox exclusive, there was this ad where the guy was like, I really like this character. They're, they're really good. And this is blah, 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 blah. And the other guy's like, I like this character because she kicks high. It's like, oh my fuck off. Like, it was so perverse. Even back then, I was like, go fuck yourselves, guys. ...new characters and stages, and the series was sort of falling into a pattern. It wasn't until Itagaki's departure that Team Ninja saw the opportunity to try dramatically new things. A new combat system, new dynamic stages, and a brand new character who broke the norm of what DOA characters had been for years. Marie Rose and Honoka proved to be so popular in Japan that, logically, it made sense to lean into their success. So I can understand that it might be frustrating to see Marie Rose and Honoka everywhere. But how bad is it really? Would you actually consider playing these gotcha games if they had Kasumi and Ayane instead of Marie and Honoka? No. So where does this long, winding road even take us? Why did I even bother bringing up these characters? Well, if you've been paying attention, you might have noticed I've been purposely omitting one particular piece of feedback from the comments. A sentiment that is shared between all three hosts. She doesn't fit. She doesn't belong in this fighting game. And now I want to ask, why? Why? I'm sorry. But, so, yeah. The first one in Street Fighter. Street Fighter, the game of... Dude, dude, world Warriors. She's just not of this world. Like Blanca, motherfuckers. The same game that gave us Blanca. And you got a problem with this character fitting into the game? The game with the... Pa any Anybody says a character doesn't fit into Tekken... The panda, the bear, the kangaroo. Shove it up your ass. DOA hasn't taken itself seriously in years. You should never fucking take anything too seriously. Anything fits, no matter how absurd or unrealistic, because they serve the purpose of expressing character. Capoeira would not work in a fight, but it works in a fighting game. Sumo would not work in a fight, but it works in a fighting game. Drunken boxing would not work in a fight, but it works in a fighting game. What line is being crossed? Pro wrestling doesn't work in a fight. It also doesn't work in a fighting game, but I force it anyway. By Ingrid, Lucky Chloe, Marie Rose, or Honoka that hasn't already been crossed before. What part of suspension of disbelief refuses to accept these characters when that same suspension of disbelief allows for science mutants, genetic godmen, and Zack? If Sakura did not exist in 1996 and was created today in the year 2021, would Sakura not belong in Street Fighter? 
Never mind the lore, never mind the gameplay, never mind any other pretenses. What is it about the sheer idea of these characters that gets people so tilted? I want to be clear that this is not about gender representation in video games or any lofty highbrow concepts like that. This is about grown men losing their shit about cute girls in frilly dresses in their fighting games. I'm not leading up to a conclusion and I'm not asking rhetorically. I said at the start of the video that I wanted to make sense of the conversation around these characters, but I can't. And so I leave the question to you. If you are the kind of person who cannot accept these characters to exist in a fighting game, why? <clears throat> I am going to say the following nonsense. When they announced that there was a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter entering Street Fighter in Street Fighter V, I think it was Laura, um, I got excited. And then they said they were adding another pro wrestler. I got excited. And then I got Armika and Laura. And I had to come to terms with the fact that if I want to play with the fighting style that I want to play with, it's going to be attached to some titties. <laughs> some whole boys. But honestly, the, that didn't... They fit in the game. Like, Street Fighter has Zangief and Sumo and Blanca. I'm sorry. You, you can't complain about literally anything. Ever. <laughs> You've got lab experiment dudes in Street Fighter, like... You, I, I don't, I don't get that one. Tekken has bear. Sorry, bear. Done. Bear. You can't complain. And DOA. If you're taking DOA seriously, touch grass. Because DOA doesn't take DOA seriously, even in their ad campaign. I think it was dead. dead. I'm gonna check. If I. Here it is. I found it. My god, it's even titled. It's even titled with the fucking punchline that I said. <laughs> this is a literal fucking ad for this game. Their marketing team approved this shit. <laughs> Their fucking marketing team appreciate approved approved this shit. They're done. They're done. You don't get to fucking take their shit seriously anymore. <laughs> there, I jumped on with you there, fucking sugar. Yeah, aged like fucking milk, indeed. Jesus Christ. 2000s were a weird time, man. A weird ass time. All right. Tomorrow is day one of the new Get Good or Get Fit Challenge. I will be doing the Get Good or Get Fit Challenge, but playing the game while on an exercise bike. I am a goddamn maniac, and we're going to be starting Dark Souls 2, I think, or Dark Souls 1, for like the fourth time on this channel, and I don't care, because we are doing new things with it every time. Um, in the meantime, Slash, thanks for hanging out with me. We had a pretty good run on um, Guilty Gear Strive today. More wins and losses. Uh, our Potemkin's really starting to come together, so... It's going to be sweaty. It's going to be sweaty. It's going to be interesting. And it's going to be a little, little bit of a logistical nightmare for the first two or three streams. But we'll get it all figured out. Uh, in the meantime, everybody have themselves a wonderful evening. And we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.